Sit back and listen. It's time for License to Practice by IELTS Medical. Hello and welcome to another episode and the last episode of Season 2 of License to Practice from IELTS Medical. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss an episode. Today we're going to be talking with Jessica, a nurse from Canada, so let's give her a call. Hi Jessica, how are you today? Hi, I'm good, how are you? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Uh, Thank you so much for coming on the podcast uh, and sharing your experience. If you could just start with telling us just a little bit about you. Yeah. Um, so I am a registered nurse from Toronto, Canada. Um, I've been a nurse for about five years now. I worked in a bunch of different areas and then I just decided that I kind of wanted to make a move and try nursing in a different country. So why did you choose the UK? Um, I feel like the UK has been kind of very similar to Canada as far Mm -hmm. as like um, culture and just a way of life and I've always loved it I've visited so many times growing up so I just figured it would be a good fit for me yeah yeah and and, and is it do you enjoy it yes I love it so far yeah it's amazing so are there any um uh, big differences between nursing in Canada and nursing in the UK I think like one it's not very different um one of the good things is that it is both um, public health care systems. So um, I know the UK does have the option of private, but yeah. as far as the NHS versus um, like Canadian health care is similar in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as nursing, I don't, I don't find it to be that different. No, I think the roles of a nurse are ba- basically very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, it just takes a bit longer to get into uh, the profession, depending on what trust you get hired on to. So. Okay. And so you had to do, um, obviously, the, the exams to become registered here in the UK. Uh, how was that? How did you find that process? Uh, so the process, I think, when, you, when looking at it at first, it does seem like it's quite overwhelming, mm-hmm. um, just all the steps that you need to take. But... I think as far as the actual, the written exam that I had to do was very, very similar to the written exam back home. So it wasn't much of a shock. And especially since I had been practicing for five years, I didn't find it very difficult. Um, And same with the OSCE. Like I said, very overwhelming when you read about the process of it. And um, even reading about it on the internet, people make it seem like it's... um, very scary almost Mm -hmm. um but with like the prep the OSCE prep programs uh it definitely helps you kind of all your anxiety about it gets taken away because you know exactly what it is that you're going into and um you kind of get fully prepared on it so nothing's quite a shock once you actually get to the OSCE yeah so you so you you did OSCE prep programs to prepare for the OSCE then did you yes yeah, so I did the three-day mm-hmm. um, program. So basically, you go over all the theory mm-hmm. and um, kind of what the OSCE uh, is about, mm-hmm. what to expect, and then um, you do like a full skills day, and then you do the mock exam. And the mock exam is amazing because mm-hmm. it really prepares you. You know, they treat you as if it's the actual OSCE. So. Yeah. You go in, you go through your station, and then you get your, not like marks at the end, but basically some comments Mm -hmm. about things that you could work on and um, things that you did really well for. Yeah. Are you ready to pass the NMC OSCE the first time as efficiently as possible? Then you're in the right place. Here at IELTS Medical, we've seen adult nurses through to a first-time OSCE pass ending last year with 98% first-time pass rate and 100% second. 
We've also assisted mental health nurses, children's nurses and midwives through their OSCE exams too. Accessible OSCE practice rooms and expert-led courses. Our nurses are not only passing their exams, but they're having fun doing it too. Inquire today about how we can assist you too. And did you do that in London? Did you do it at the centre? Yeah, yeah, so I did it at um, the IL Centre. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I did the three-day program, but I know that there is um, the four or five-day program as well. So mm -hmm. if you felt um, like if students feel like they need extra practice or extra mock exams, like they do have that um, option. So yeah, I think it's definitely worth it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it sounds like it is. Obviously, it's worked for you, hasn't it? So, yeah, yeah. so are you? How long ago did you um take your exams? The the uh, so the... I moved um over in June of this mm -hmm. year. Okay. And then I did my OSCE prep course uh, at the beginning of July, and then I did my OSCE exam. Uh, at the end of July, um, oh. and I passed on the first try, thankfully. Oh, yeah, well done. Um, yeah, so that that's definitely the one thing. It's hard to actually get your pin mm -hmm. and start working as a registered nurse if you have, like, your OSCE still hanging over you. Yeah. Um, yeah. So did you, when you moved over, were you sort of sponsored by a hospital? Did you have a job that you were going to go into after you uh, got your pin or or not? Did you just, did you come over without any of that? Yeah, so coming from Canada, I came over um, basically through an agency. Mm -hmm. uh, so they helped me um, put through like my registration papers with the NMC mm -hmm. and also um, the v my visa as well. Uh, so I did have... A position lined up mm -hmm. I was also working as um, the HCA okay. before I got my pin so I also which was helpful for my OSCE because mm -hmm. I was able to see how the hospitals work as well um, which was good when I went into my OSCE I knew kind of the process already yeah. of like a day-to-day -day life right yeah of course yeah and then the the sort of other side to that obviously you've uh, had the experience that helped you with your OSCE would you say the OSCE helped um for, for work when you did get your pin um I I think it did I mean I find it a bit difficult because being from Canada mm. I think the um nursing school and everything is similar yeah, yeah. and um like I already spoke English, I've worked in English, so mm -hmm. the OSCE did almost feel a bit like kind of repetitive for me. But on the yeah. other hand, I see how it's extremely useful for people who are coming from other countries yeah. who um, don't necessarily speak English as their first language. So a lot of things, um, like as skills perhaps, mm -hmm. and the language that you would use to perform a skill would be different for some people. Yeah. So I could see how the OSCE would um, help them for before they actually start working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people yeah. have said that, so it's interesting to get different different perspectives. But yeah, of course, if the health system is similar, yeah, then exactly. Yeah. Um. Well, look. Thank you so much for for t chatting to me. Um. I feel like it's been really interesting to get your yeah. your story. Do you have yeah. any um, sort of other word, final words of advice for anyone that's thinking about making the move and becoming registered here in the UK? Um, I wouldn't say like words of advice, but I just mm. think um, for me, it's been an amazing opportunity. Mm. Uh, and even if I don't decide to stay in the UK, I just think as a nurse, it's really, really good to be able to experience um, your career in different countries and see kind of um, what skills you can get mm -hmm. and just even new cultures and everything so it's definitely been worth it for me yeah and do you think you're gonna stay yeah. or do you not know yet you might go somewhere else I feel like I'll probably stay here yes mm. but you never know <laughs> yeah no no true true yeah. um right well thank you so much and no um, problem. yeah enjoy the rest of your day Okay, thank <laughs> you so much. Bye, bye. Bye.
Thank you so much for listening to my chat with Jessica. We talked a lot in that episode about the OSCE examination and the preparation for the OSCE examination. So I really hope that you found that helpful. That's it for season two of Licensed to Practice from IELTS Medical. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss an episode. And as always, to your success.